Okay, and again, this goes back to my fallacy talk the other day. The world doesn't owe you shit, okay? There are six ways to roll that seven. There are three ways to roll that four. No matter what happens, you pull out 10 fours in a row, then the chances of a seven are still 16% in the next roll. It never changes. Let's talk about the law of big numbers. So again, our gambling series here, we're in gambling 301 now, which is all about the math. And in session seven here, law of big numbers, I want to really talk about for the for the gambler out there, the ways the casino really draws it out and makes their money from us. And we talked last week in previous sessions, I guess, a little bit about house edge and how over the course of time, the house edge will bleed you dry. We looked at like after 5,000, 10,000 wins, just the drastic nature of how much the house edge sucks out of your life, right? Hundreds, thousands of dollars, right? You're hundreds of wins behind. The law of big numbers plays into that. I'm going to show you why the casinos don't care about you winning. They really don't care about you winning. And people go, why? Well, yeah, they really don't. They, they, they don't care about dice controllers. They don't care about nothing because they have math on their side. They have time on their side. Okay. So why does the house always win? Reason number four is this law of big numbers. And all that it means is this, the simple definition on screen there. It's the result becomes closer to expected value as the number of trials is increased. And that's it. This is more of that secret sauce that the casino has that you just don't have, right? They're going to play this long game and we're playing a short game. I'm going to put that in air quotes. We'll talk more tomorrow about what the short game means for you and me. But yeah, this is what's going on. And the only question that matters in all of this, I think, is where are we relative to probability? And I think if you look at your time at the table, you will never be in anyone's, I mean, I'm going to put air quotes in there on never, but never. You're never going to be during your session at a table at probability. You're very rarely going to sit there for, you know, a hundred rolls and see exactly 16.77s and see, you know, 11 sixes, like whatever the number is, or 13.86. You're not going to see the right number of anything during your hundred rolls that you're at the table tonight. It just won't happen. Um, it's so rare that even one of the numbers pops perfect during that. So you want to know where you are relative to probability. And here's the thing. The fewer trials that you've got, right? If you only see 25 rolls, right? The wider the gap is going to be between um, where you are, right? This, we call it the margin for error or the variance between reality where you are and the probability where you ought to be, okay? The more data that you get, the closer you are. And I'll give you a, good, a couple of good examples here. There, we can do a, um, kind of a political example that I think makes a lot of sense. Um, and here's, here's a, here it is, right? Given 100,000 people, okay? Let's say we ask two people how old you are. An eight-year-old and a 90-year-old or whatever, right? That probably is close. But if we have a 35-year-old and a 42-year-old, right? You can't average that out and get anywhere close to the average age of the population of that 100,000 people, right? Two people is not enough to get a good average. If you ask 100 people, now you're getting closer, right? 100 people is a pretty good random sampling, right? Of how close you're going to be to the, to, the, to the end. If you play politics at all, you've probably heard of all these polls, right? Gallup's got a poll, Rasmussen's got a poll, who's going to win the election, whatever. Those polls, they always say a, a margin of error of plus or minus two or three or whatever percent, right? They can sample 2,000 people, 2,500 people, and get close enough within two or three points of 140 million people with that small of a sample size, as long as the sample size is, is perfectly random. They can't, you, you can't go to like a Trump rally and, and get a sample from that and get a gauge, right? You got to randomly go. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? You don't need a whole lot, right, to get to a, a pretty close look at what's going to happen, but you got to get past two or three, okay? And in our world, consider 36 rolls at a table or 100 rolls at a table that you see compared to the million or billion rolls that the casino sees, right? You're seeing, you're in that realm there where we've asked two people out of 100,000. That's where you are. Your gap, your margin for error is, is enormous compared to what the casino sees. The casino is always working on that tiny little margin. They're kind of at the end. Um, so we're going to consider today the seven in craps, okay? I'm going to show you some um, a little spreadsheet that's going to kind of like 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 lean into this thing for you, right? So we know that there's a 16.67% chance of rolling a seven. That's the, that's one out of six chance. We know that. 
which means out of 100 rolls, you ought to see about 16, closer to 17, right? In 1,000 rolls, you ought to see about 167 sevens. In 10,000 rolls, 1,667 sevens should come. In 100,000 rolls, you'll see 16,667. If the percentages hold true, I can guarantee you this. When we do a trial of 100 over and over and over and over again, very, very rarely will you ever see exactly 16. It's going to be bouncing around because it's a small sample size. But as we stack hundreds after hundreds after hundreds after hundreds, you'll start seeing that we come closer to where you're supposed to be. The more numbers you get, the closer you get to what you expect. And I want to show this to you in a spreadsheet. So let me go. Okay, let's check out this spreadsheet that I put together for us that I think will help visualize the law of large numbers for you in a, in a meaningful way. So we're going to examine the seven in craps. So if you're a craps player, you know that the seven comes once every six times. For everybody else, the seven comes once every six times. And, and basically what happens is this. There's six ways to roll a seven out of 36 combinations. It's a 16.67% chance to see a seven. Now, let's take a look at what that looks like over the long haul. Now here, this, this spreadsheet set up where this will give us our total rolls, our total number of sevens, the expected number of sevens, and how we're doing relative to expectation. Here we are 167 sevens below what we expected, which is ideal, or I, 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 because we have none. Let's go ahead and put, for the sake of argument, 100 sevens in here. Let's say we had 1,000 rolls and saw 100 sevens. What this is telling us is that for this slice, for this piece, this thousand rolls, we're 10% off, okay? In total, of course, with just one series, we're 10% off. And relative to the, expe the expectation, 10%, we're 6.67% off of what the expected value was. We're ahead of the game by 6.67%. Let's um, actually, do, I'm gonna make like a few copies of this, okay? Let's say we had 5,000 rolls. And let's say that over the course of 5,000 rolls, we had an even better run. We have this miraculous run where we only saw like 50 sevens, right? On every 1,000 rolls. That'd be amazing. Because what should you see? You should see 160, if I did the first one, you should see 167 sevens, right? That would be the actual, basically, right where you should be. But let's pretend that we had this miracle and we're only seeing 50, 50, 50, 50, right? We're 585 sevens below where we should be. That's Fantastic, right? That's 11% difference. The delta between where you should be and where you are is 11% going on 12%. It's crazy, right? You might say, the people who maybe believe in some gambler's fallacy might say, you know what? We're not seeing a lot of sevens right now. The world owes us back sevens. In order for this thing to get back to zero, for there to be no delta, for us to be at 16.67%, it's got to give us back sevens. You're going to start seeing, you know, out of the next thousand, you're going to start seeing 200, 300 sevens. So it's got to catch up to itself, right? That's not the case. Watch this. This is going to blow your mind. I'm going to take this line. We're going to copy this down, okay? And I'm going to put in here 167, which is the exact number of sevens you expect to see. I'm not going to inject any additional sevens. We're going to say that we had 5,000 amazing rolls, 5,000 amazing sessions. And now we're going to have a whole bunch of sessions where it's perfect, where it's literally exactly where it should be. I'm going to take this line and we're going to copy this line down. I'm going to copy it. Let's do like 30, 30 more sessions. We have 30,000 total rolls now. Okay. And most of them, as you can see, right, are the regular number, right? We beat their rear end. We're 585 ahead, right? Then for the next 30,000 rolls, it goes just like clockwork. 16.67% of the time we see a seven every single time. Look at our delta now, right? As we get bigger numbers, the closer we get to the expected total return. We're only 1.92% delta just by doing it right, just by getting the right number. No extra sevens came, just the right number of sevens came a whole bunch of times. What that's telling you is that this, 585, is a lot, it's 11% off when the number is only 5,000, right? When the number is 30,000, that same 585 is less and less significant. And I can actually drop in here um, another one. Let's just go down and let's copy it down a bunch more. I'll copy it down like another 100 times. Let's just bring it on down. Look how close we're getting. 
86,000 rolls later, right? The same, we're still ahead. Everything has been perfect ever since. Look at how much closer we are. We're almost to where it's not even a thing, right? Let's copy that. Let's do it again. Let's do another, whatever number of rolls. Now, now we're down at like 0.24%, a quarter of a percent away, right? Nothing changed. All I did was say for the next 208,000 rolls or whatever it's been, We've been perfect. It's been the exact expectation. The significance of the delta is meaningless when you get into many, 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 many roles. Okay. Let's take all this away. Go back to where we started. I'm actually going to paste in here a formula. This thing um, will take any number of roles. It will randomly generate a number of sevens for that series of roles. Sometimes it'll be higher than it should be. Here's one where it's where it's worse for us, right? The aggregate. Again, for this slice, it's 18% sevens, which is a lot. The aggregate, again, is all of them put together. And here's our delta. This will let us take a look at, again, not me fudging it. I'm just going to randomly do it like we would at a casino. We'll take a few. And you'll see that as I do this, it gets 11 to 9 to 7 to 6 to 5 to a little bit less. Every time, it gets a little bit lower. Okay. In fact, we could just say, let's just put 100,000 rolls in here. Let's do another 100,000 rolls. 110,000 rolls later, we're at 0.5%, okay? If I did 500,000 rolls, 510,000 rolls in, we're at 0.15%, okay? This should show you that the closer you get to infinity, the closer you get to zero. And that's a really important thing. The casino's playing that game. They don't care one bit that you beat them a bunch up here. They don't care about that because they know that after you walk away a winner, there's going to be 500,000 people that won't, right? Or 500,000 trials that are going to get them here. And when they're here, what are they doing? They're taking 100% of all your losses and they're taking now whatever the house edge is on all of, on all of your wins. So when this becomes zero, that house edge is a guarantee. The accountants lock up the house edge. This is a house edge lock. Up in here, when the house, when this is above the house edge and these smaller runs, yeah, they're losing some money in small amounts. But again, they're playing, they're playing billions of rolls per year. Billions of rolls per year per table, per casino, per city. And that's why the law of big numbers works against you. So don't get yourself sucked into this idea that. Oh, because we're so far ahead, we're due. Nothing is due. Even if you just do it straight up, as I showed you, with perfect expectation numbers, you're going to be at basically net zero in the end. And net zero is a positive for the casino. That's where their secret sauce lies. And that's a good look, I think, at, at the way that that house edge or that that law of big numbers, law of large numbers and house edge kind of play together. So there it is. Hope that was uh, I hope that was that was educational. For you, I think that's an interesting thing to me. When I look at this, it always blows my mind. Um, <clears throat> let's try that last part again there. So there it is. I hope that that was was interesting for you. This always blows my mind when I see it. Like I know this to be the truth. I know how the law of large numbers works. And every time I run the simulation, I'm always I hate to say that I'm shocked by it because I shouldn't be, but it's like, damn, it just works every single time. And again, that's why casinos are what they are. That's how they can rake the money and that's how they can they can guarantee it because it is what it is. It always works itself out. Right? The bigger the sample size, the closer we get. The more times I randomize it, we might have 10% difference to start and then it always comes back to almost perfect no matter what happens and it's not because we got more. You can see that it does that even when it's perfect. Even after being a thousand sevens off at the start, if everything goes just perfect, exact probability for the next 100,000 rolls, you're at zero delta. It's crazy, right? And again, I think people don't, don't realize that. Um, and I think you because it, it feeds fallacy, right? Why do we care? This is the foundation upon which the casinos win. It's the long game. Like I said before, the casino, the casino, they don't care if you win because they know over time when it evens out. The house edge is the thing that's stable and it feeds them. There's no variance in the long game. There's variance in that short game, right? And those 100 rolls and 1,000 rolls, you get spikes. We win, they win. We win, they win. Over time, 
it's flat. You'll see that it's down there at less than 1% and they win all the time in the long game. That's the thing. The casinos never experience variance because they never close. You experience variance because you go in for a minute and you leave. And I say a minute, I mean an hour, two hours, three hours. That's a tiny window of time where you experience the spikes, right? Gives us, gives us the feeling of, oh, we did it. We beat them. Or the, oh, got our ass kicked today. We're experiencing that. They're experiencing nothing. They literally experience nothing. They're just making sure that that trend line stays straight. That's why they, that's why they can't take card counters, right? Card counters get them away from that expectation at the bottom. Card counters are the one thing that create variance and consistent variance. We don't. We don't. And I think it's important for us to realize that. It's a, I think it's a big, it's a big Ace. thing. Jack Ace put on a great video. Same thing I just did, basically, but he does it in roulette. And he's, a ma he's an actual mathematician. He explains it really, really well. Watch this video. It's called Using the Law of Large Numbers to Predict Streaks. That's the name of the video. There's the icon for it. Go check that one out. I encourage you to go search for other Law of Large Numbers uh, videos. There's a bunch of guys do it in sports, sports gambling. They give great examples. Just understand it. Okay. And again, this goes back to my fallacy talk the other day. The world doesn't owe you shit. Okay. There are six ways to roll that seven. There are three ways to roll that four. No matter what happens, you pull out 10 fours in a row, then the chances of a seven are still 16% on the next roll. It never changes, right? For you and me, we may experience times where it feels like it does, but it never changes. You're not O to seven. You're not O to four. You saw it just now. After 100,000, after a million, after a billion rolls, it's all going to be here at the end anyway, right? We're playing for variance. My daily paycheck, I, I'm looking at a two-hit strategy because I'm trying to live in quick spikes. I'm trying to live in variants that aren't going to destroy me. I'm not trying to play a thousand rolls to make 500 bucks. I'm just not because I, I, I don't want to get to the closer, right? To me, short game play in, 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 in our game. That's why I like to play a short, a shorter game because the longer I play, the closer we get to that little where it's, where it's always going to lose, right? The shorter I play where I have these spikes, yeah, I'll lose big sometimes, but more often than not, we're going to be in a spike that's that's probably okay for us. And that's the, that's the reason why I like a short game better than a long game. Anyway, that's tomorrow's conversation. Let's get the Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free to leave us a comment here in the, in the comment section for the video. But really better still, join us on Discord. Go to casinogaming.tv and hit the community link in the menu there and join our Discord. That's where me, other uh, YouTubers, and all of our uh, subscribers hang out. We sit there and talk strategy and just BS kind of all day long. It's a great way to get connected and stay connected and kind of interact with the team, um, learn about meetups and, and get togethers and all that kind of stuff. So with all that said, again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time. God bless you. And I will see you in the next one.